Okay, we're going to talk about series, resistive, or resistors. Series resistors. If I have a point A and I have a point B and I want to put an ohm meter in between those two points and then I want to come out here and I could have series resistors they're going like this and then they come back okay we're going to call this one R1, R2, and R3 now in a series circuit RT that's the total resistance equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay? Now let's say these resistors are 22 ohms and then 10 ohms and then 5 ohms. Okay? Then RT would be equal to 22 plus 10 plus five and so that would be RT would be equal to 37 ohms. The next one would be the parallel resistive circuit. In that case, we'd have our point of measurement, which would be point A and point B. We would put an ohmmeter between those two points to measure. And everything's in parallel. This is like your house wiring. The series we did a little bit earlier is like the wiring on the little uh, Christmas lights. If one goes out, they all go out. This one. Uh, one can go out and it doesn't affect any of the others. We're again going to call this R1, R2, and R3. And the formula for solving this for total resistance for parallel would be RT, 1 over RT, equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Okay, let's say that we give these values. Let's say they were all 10 ohms. If these were all 10 ohms, it's a lot easier to calculate because to find, if these were all, let's say they were 100 ohms, okay, make it a little easier. If this R1 was 100 and R2 was 100 and R3 was 100, then you take the total number of resistors and divide it by the number of resistors, so you would be 100 divided by uh, 3 which would give us a value of 33 ohms because it's easy to calculate when they're all equal. However, we also have to remember that the total value of a series resistive circuit, I mean a parallel resistive circuit, is always less than the value of the smaller resistor. And of course in a, par in a series resistive circuit the, the re total resistance of the circuit is always greater than the value of the largest resistor. But let's work this out for some resistors that are not the same value. So let's say that this one again is 22 ohms, R1. R2 is then 10 ohms, and R3 is 5 ohms just like we did with the series, same values. And that would be 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over RT plus 1 over R3. So let's work that out. R1 is 22 ohms, so it would be 1 over 22 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 5. Working that out even further, it would be 0.045 plus 0.1 plus 0.2. Okay, and then we would work that out even further. That would be equal to a total of 
point three four five okay so now if we have one over point three four five that would be equal to two point eight nine ohms the next one would be a combination circuit let's say that we have our two points again A and B and we want to have an ohmmeter reading them and we want to know what that resistance is going to be and we go to our resistor then we run our line down and we have a resistor a resistor and a resistor and we come out here with another resistor and we go across here this is not a simple circuit this is a complicated circuit it has both parallel and series components what we will do is we'll call this one R1 let's call this one R2 R3 R4 and R5 the first thing we need to do is solve the parallel components of the circuit so let's remove the series components and let's just look at the parallel component and so it's R3 R4 and R5 now let's just put some values in here let's say that this one's a hundred ohms a hundred ohms and fifty ohms this one is fifty ohms and this one is a hundred ohms so they're not all the same values and some are in series and some are in parallel the current let's just say this is the negative side here the current's going to flow totally through this resistor it's going to divide through these resistors and then sum back up again and go through that resistor and you remember the rules for series and parallel circuits in series circuits the current is the same in parallel circuits the current divides in series circuit the voltage is dropped across the resistors and it is a division like the voltage here and the voltage here and all the voltages here would have to add up to be the total supply voltage and so when we look at the difference in these circuits we'll see where, where the current is dividing up that's going to be our parallel component and where the current is the same that's going to be our series component of the combination circuit if this is a hundred a hundred and fifty then that would be one over a hundred plus one over a hundred plus one over fifty which would be point oh one plus point oh one plus point oh two which would be equal to point oh four if we take one over point oh four the total resistance of the parallel part of the circuit is equal to twenty five ohms so we have point oh one point oh one plus point oh two equals point oh four we take one over 0.04 it's going to be 25 ohms so now we can simplify this circuit taking the parallel part out by going here and having a resistor a resistor and then another resistor and these are all in series this one is 100 this one is now 25 and this one is 50 
and that would be the formula for series RT equals R1 plus R2 plus R3 so it would be 100 plus 25 plus 50 uh, which would give us a total of 175 ohms for the whole circuit. This circuit between A and B is now 175 ohms and we got that by simplifying the circuit by taking the parallel and making it into one resistor and then that became a simple series circuit and that allowed us to find the total resistance. Now there's also rules for other components in series and parallel like inductors also follow a rule similar to that of resistors if we have an A and then we have a coil and then a coil and then a coil and then we come back around to B LT which is the total inductance and if this is L1 L2 and L3 is equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3 however there's a lot more complexity with inductors than there is with um, with resistors because inductors are AC devices and you can have mutual inductance it's where the magnetic fields around these individual inductors interact with each other and so even though this is the basic way of finding the total inductance in a simple way uh, we also have to have a way of calculating how much the mutual inductance of this inductor affects that inductor and this inductor affects that inductor and that will change the total inductance and that's a pretty complex formula but to simply find what the total inductance would be if they're in series you would use this method okay so let's just say that this is 10 Henry's if this was a 10 Henry inductor and this was a 10 Henry inductor and this one was a 10 Henry then the total inductance in this case would be 10 plus 10 plus 10 would be equal to 30 Henry's for that inductance. Now that's for inductors in series but also you gotta remember the inductors this is for AC inductors are like a wire at DC so they don't really have a lot of in you know effect or impedance to the signal when it's a DC it acts like a wire and so the other thing you have is the resistance of the wire itself now inductors in parallel would be again we have our A and B which is our measuring point and we have an inductor we have another inductor and we have another inductor and they're all in parallel okay the formula for that would be just like the resistive formula 1 over LT is equal to 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus 1 over L3.